Wait, don't go anywhere yet. I would like to introduce you to Rick Rudisil. Um, we have not seen each other. This is Rick in, back in our day. Uh, since it's Youth Sunday, we were youth once. Uh, we haven't seen each other for 41 years. And it was when we played in a band together. And we picked him up in Indianapolis and paid him peanuts. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and, um, so, and this was me in the band. And so uh, this is our, our great reunion today to uh, come and play together. So thank you very much, Rick, for being here with us today. <laughs> so to all you young people out there, you know, we all get old. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are celebrating our youth. It's Youth Sunday. We are so excited about the growing youth program in our church. I decided to dress like a young person today and... Um, I know, you're getting me confused with the, young, the youngsters here. Um, our youth uh, celebrated a retreat time this, uh, this, this weekend and did some service, some hard labor out in the community and had some fun times of fellowship. And uh, so today we will have some of our youth participating in the praise band, some will serve as liturgists. And uh, I just want all of you to just see their faces and be happy that they're here and, um, and just, just let them know that uh, we're, just, we're just grateful that we have this growing youth program. Um, I'm also grateful to all the people who helped with the church cleanup yesterday. We had a great crew, uh, people who trimmed shrubbery and people who cleaned in here in the sanctuary and all kinds of things that happened yesterday. And it was just great to see everybody coming out and uh, working together doing that. So thank you for everyone who's done that. Um, you may notice that our welcome table is back. Um, we are determined to get accurate attendance. I think I said that last week. We want to know everybody that's here, and in a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about maybe even having a little incentive for being in worship on a regular basis. So we want to know who's worshiping here with us. So you can either sign out front, or you can sign in on the pew pads here. If you're visiting with us, we would love to have some contact information from you, and we would just love to, to greet you and and let you uh, know that we're happy that you're here. Um, so you can sign either or, you don't have to do both. If you signed out front, you don't have to do the pew pads, but if you didn't sign in out front, we'd appreciate you signing the pew pads. So well, just help us figure this out. It might change again in two or three weeks, but uh, right now we're trying to get, uh, just get it accurate. And if you're worshiping with us online, we'd also like to know that you're here. And so just say hi, just say good morning Tuscawilla, or. Uh, you know, it's me, I'm here worshiping online. Otherwise, we can't really tell that you're there. So we would also like to know that you're here. Just uh, one announcement that I'd like to lift up today. On Tuesday, we are having a mentor training for people who want to volunteer at Pinecrest Elementary. It'll be here at Tuscawilla. They're going to come here to train us at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And so the, the mentoring, if you weren't here a few weeks ago, one of the administrators from Pinecrest came to talk to us, and she said that they're elementary students are in need of mentors, of people who will just come for a half an hour a week and build a relationship with this child. And uh, we do it throughout the school year. Of course, there's breaks throughout the school year. Um, but I think so many of you would be great mentors. And so if you can come to the mentor training on Tuesday, uh, it would be great. You can just show up. You don't really need to sign up. Uh, there's going to be some, you're going to have to get a background check and some things like that since you'll be working with students. But it, it seems like a great way for us to serve and to really change the lives of the students that we're mentoring. And so uh, now I want to uh, introduce Sam, who's going to do our call to worship. So if you'll please stand. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today and lead you in a call to worship as we celebrate our awesome youth group. Good morning. Today, we come together to lift our hearts in joy and praise to God. We celebrate the gift of our youth group where we learn, play, and grow in our faith together. Amen. Our youth group is like a little family where we laugh, share, and support one another. We are not just the future of the church. We're an important part of it right now. Psalm 92, verse 12 through 13 says, The righteous flourish like palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They, they flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. 
Just like the palm tree and cedar, we are planted here in God's house, flourishing in his love and grace. Hallelujah. So as we sing and worship today, let's remember to have fun, be ourselves, and let God's light shine through us. Thank you all for being here and celebrating our youth group with us. Let's make this worship service an awesome time of praise and love. All right, good morning, church. Um, for Youth Sunday worship, we're going to be starting with something really high energy here, so let's, uh, let's worship together. I've got a river of living water, a fountain that never will run dry. It's an open heaven you're releasing, and we will never be denied. Because we're stirring up. Shout, 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 deep 
cries out, deep cries out to you, deep cries out, deep cries out to you, we cry out, we cry out to you. Cries out to you, deep cries out to deep cries out to you. We cry out to we cry out to you, Jesus. When we are the church together. church together all who follow Jesus all around the world yes we're the church together the church is not a building the church is not a steeple the church is not a resting place the church is a people uh, I am the church you are the church we are the church together all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, Yes, we're the church together. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's writing, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Gather. There's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it's saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. To cause some people receive the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. You may be seated. And now we have a special, uh, special treat for you today. Ashley Lilly has been at camp all summer, uh, working as a counselor at Warren Willis United Methodist Camp and Conference Center. And um, it was great. I got to spend a week with her. I know Alex got to spend a week out there as well. And um, just really powerful work that they're doing with the young people. So we wanted to give Ashley a moment to share about her experiences this summer. Yes, good morning. Um, so I spent the summer at camp with a lot of youth. Uh, we have kids stay overnight from rising fourth grade all the way to just graduated high school. And then we have kindergartners and up that stay for just the day. So I wanna tell you guys what we do in just like a normal day at camp. We start with a morning devotional. We do two skills, which is like disc golf, canoeing, sailing, high ropes, kind of all our fun stuff. We go to the pool. We have a rest hour every day. We do praise time, which is like really high energy worship. We have worship where we have a speaker and then we do some calmer music. We have free time every day. We have two small groups every day. One of them, they're with everyone in their age group and one of them, they're just with like 12 kids in their age group. We have a theme game every day. This year was the 75th anniversary for camp. So we time traveled for our theme. Uh, and then we end every day with a nighttime devotional. So we do a lot every single day. Uh, camp is a really cool place because 
It's actually the place where the most people get their calling in the Florida Conference. Like, children get their calling to become Christians, and then uh, people will get their callings to then be involved in ministry there, too. So it's a really special place. A lot of people feel very close to God there. Uh, and something that is really cool about it is that it's a temporary ministry. So we only see these kids for five days at a time, uh, and that's all we get with them. We are called, yes, this is me. Um, if you show the other one of the big group hug at the end, yeah. So this is all of the counselors. There's about 65 of us. We're all there all summer. Um, so we are really called to not try and change the kids, change the way they believe, change um, any ideas they have, but really just to love them. We're only with them for those five days. Um, and we really just are called to help them encounter Christ through us, through our love. Uh, and sometimes temporary ministries can be hard because we're only with them for a step of their journey. And sometimes that can be a big step where they like make some big discovery, but sometimes it is not as fun of a step and it, you don't really see any change and that can be really hard uh, every week. But the reason that it works is because it allows the kids to disconnect from their everyday lives and all the distractions that they have at home uh, and really just focus on being there and experiencing love through the counselors and then through each other. And we have temporary ministries here too, which are hard to see sometimes, like VBS is a temporary ministry some of those kids come for VBS. Some of them are here all year, but some of them we only see for that week, and we don't really get to see the change in their lives. But Catherine shared a story with me that one of the kids that was here this year for VBS doesn't really go to church, but their parent shared that they had started praying at meals because the little, I think it was a six-year-old girl, decided that they should start praying before meals, and it like changed their daily lives. And we wouldn't know that if the parent didn't share. So we just have like really big impacts on these kids, but we just don't get to see them, and sometimes that can be hard to do. Um, but this was my third summer at camp, so something that I get is to see these kids for three summers in a row, and I don't get to see their in-between time, but I do get to see how they changed over the year, and it's really powerful for them to come back and seek me out, and I get to see them and the ways they've changed. Uh, I really like camp, and I get to connect others from church here now, so we had a lot of we had kids come as campers, we had a bunch of people come as adult volunteers, and then we had a worship speaker, Catherine from our church. Um, and then another thing that I do is I'm high ropes, so if you wanna put that back up. I was the director this summer, so that means I'm in charge out there. I got to spend a lot of time zip lining and hanging out like 60 feet in the air. There is my brother with me too while we were there. Um, so I do this every week, four of the days of the week I'm up there hanging out and it is 60 feet in the air and we zip line so that is a very nerve-wracking time for a lot of the kids where i get to help them overcome a big fear of like taking that step off uh, and it feels very routine for me i'm up there my job is just to get them down that's pretty much my whole job make sure that they're safely strapped in and get them down so sometimes they'll cry or like just have a big moment while they're up there but it just feels very routine for me but then they'll come up later and even like years later and be like, you were the person up there, you really helped me, and so I don't even remember the moment because I do it all the time, I'm doing it over and over, but it was a really big deal for them, and it's just something cool that I get to experience, and it can remind you that you might not always feel like you're making a big difference, but for them you are. Um, but yeah, camp is really awesome, and I'm really grateful that I got to go be there again, and I'm really grateful for you guys for supporting me and anyone who sent me mail, I really loved it. I loved getting letters this summer. Uh, it was a great reminder of home and coming back here. So I hope that our church can continue to support the ministry and connect with camp. Yeah, that's me with my other high ropes director and then the two waterfront directors. So this is a really great place and I'm happy I got to spend my summer there. So thank you guys. <laughs> The kids can come on up now. Great. Hi, guys. Good morning. 
I guess you've noticed already something different about our service today because of who was playing our music. Do you know what we're calling today? Did you hear? Youth Sunday, that's right. And we have a youth group here that's growing. Um, Ashley is amazing. You just heard all of the amazing things she's doing at camp. Well, she's also doing really amazing things here. And we have, I have in my hand the names of the eight. We have, our, we've grown our group from zero to eight, praise the Lord. And I have those eight children's names in my hand. And I'm going to lay them out right here so we can look at them. Because I've been thinking, so our lesson today in children's church is about creation. And when I hear the creation story about a God that can create everything with just his word in it's easy maybe to think of it if you're not thinking of how big the world is <laughs> and the universe and each plant and every drop of water and this amazing, huge God. But really, that God is very powerful. But I have him in alphabetical order. Um, but God also wants to have a conversation with us every day. Isn't that amazing? This God who created the stars and the fish and the birds and the plants and the mountains and the valleys and the, uh, every, he knows the number of hairs on our heads and he wants to talk to us every day. And he wants to hear from us every day. Us, me and you and who are we, right? Because what, when we are able to talk to the creator of the world, we are so loved to be able to do that. So I have, it works out great, there's eight of you sitting here and there's eight names right here. So will you come a little bit closer? We're going to pray, just like you're going back to school this week, these youth are going back to school this week, and we're starting back at youth group tonight at 5 o'clock. That's also an announcement. Youth group is back tonight from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock with dinner, games, worship, and a lesson. Uh, so definitely spread the word if you know any 6th through 12th graders. But if you'll just reach out and take a name. Don't take your sibling's name. Take a different name. Everyone grab their own sibling's name. Don't take your sibling's name. Take a different name. There we go. Hold it in your hand. I want you to take it home too, but we're going to pray for them right now, and you look at that name, and you think of that name while I'm praying too. Then take it home and pray for them this week, okay? Especially today that they'll be able to join back in with youth group and stay connected with our church and with Christ. So let's pray now, and then we'll head and we'll talk more about this awesome creator that wants to talk to us. God, thank you so much for this church. Thank you for these children. Thank you for our youth group that we're celebrating today and the people that pour into the lives of the children and youth here at the church and, and want to disciple them along the way. Help all of these children and youth as they're going back to school and our teachers and administrators and school staff that you will just be working in their lives so that they can make a difference in their schools. We love you and we ask that you be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. We come now to a time of prayer, and so let us join our hearts together as we go to the Lord. Loving God, we gather here today as your children, young and old, to worship you with joy in our hearts. Thank you for the gift of this beautiful day and the chance to come together as a church family. As we pray, we remember those who are sick, lonely, or facing challenges. Please wrap them in your loving arms and bring them comfort and healing. We also pray for our community and our world. Help us to be kind, compassionate, and always ready to lend a helping hand to those in need. Thank you for our families, friends, and teachers who guide and support us. Bless them with your love and wisdom. As we listen to your word and sing praises, may our hearts be open to your presence and may we grow closer to you each day. And now we pray in the precious name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if our ushers will please come forward for the morning offering. And I believe uh, Philip is going to lead us in a moment of prayer. Dear God, thank you for all the blessings you have given us as we give our offerings today. We want to show our love and gratitude for you. Please use these gifts to help others and spread your love in the world. Amen. Shine your light and let the whole world see. 
singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. Be seated. Today's today's scripture is First Timothy four six through sixteen. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wives' tales. Train yourself in godliness. For while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way. Holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and struggle because we have, we have our hope set on the living God who is the Savior of all, especially of those who believe. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, Give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect this gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them and so that you may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save yourself, both both you and your hearers. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Henry. So, you know, when I was a kid and uh, was going to school, um, I was not a huge fan of school. That changed later. I ended up going back more than I ever thought that I would. But when I was a kid... School was just one of those things that you had to go to, and you had to do it, and somebody was making you do it. And, you know, I thought, you know, as soon as I don't have to do this anymore, that's it, I'm done with it. And I also thought that church was the same way, because my parents dragged me. My parents made me go to church, and the rule was, if you couldn't, if you were not well enough to go to church in the morning, you could not go roller skating that afternoon. 
And every Sunday afternoon when I was a kid, we went to the roller rink and our parents dropped us off and it was this time of freedom. So uh, I would do anything to be able to go roller skating on Sunday afternoon, even going to church. And it was Sunday school and church. And uh, once again, I thought, you know, when I'm old enough, I'm not going to keep doing this anymore. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but one thing that I had wrong is that church and school are different. School is an institution. Um, it is, it is government-run. Teachers are hired. We, uh, I used to be a teacher. We work for the Department of Education. Um, and uh, if, if a kid doesn't go to school, it doesn't really affect the school very much. Nothing really changes that much. if. Uh, if a kid decides they just don't want to go to school, now the state has something to say about that. But a church is different. A church is much more like a co-op than it is an institution. For the church, there's not some big uh, over, overreaching arm that guides it. We do have the Florida Conference, but it's also a co-op where we all work together. And so in, in being part of the church, each one of us is responsible for the life of the church. So when, uh, when kids are younger, um, a lot of times we baptize children as babies in the United Methodist Church because we are uh, showing that God's provenient grace is already with them. Uh, you can be baptized anytime in the United Methodist Church. And in October, Catherine is going to share with us a little bit more about baptism in the United Methodist Church. But then when students are... Uh, of a certain age, and normally here at Tuscawilla, it's when they're in sixth grade, we ask children to make a commitment to join the church. And they do that in a time of confirmation. And when they're confirmed in the church, what they're essentially saying is that everything that was promised at my baptism, all of those vows that I took, and all of those, those vows to, um, to fight against evil and to support the, the life of the church, the children are making that profession of faith for themselves. They're saying on their own that they want to do that. And so they become part of the co-op. And I, I love these shirts so much. These were for Vacation Bible School. That it says, uh, equipping the future church. And so many times people will say to our children, you're the future of the church. And you know what? Those people are wrong. <laughs> That's the reason future is crossed out. Because they're the current church. They're the church right now. And that's what we're celebrating today, is that uh, our youth group are people that are in sixth grade through 12th grade. And so children's ministry is from uh, birth, essentially, to fifth grade. But our youth group, when students get into sixth grade, we believe that they're old enough to make some decisions for themselves. And so one of them is this commitment to join the church. So I want to look at our passage of Scripture today, and we're going to take it apart bit by bit. So if anybody wants to hold your Bible open to 1 Timothy 4, um, we're beginning with chapter 6. And so first it says this, uh, embrace your identity in Christ. And so the passage of Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 6 says, if you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished in the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. We find this identity in Christ as followers of Jesus. We, we get this identity in our baptism, and we're welcomed into the family of God, where either we or someone on our behalf recognizes that God's grace is working in us, and, and take these vows on our behalf. And then confirmation is an opportunity to make that decision on, on our own. Now, I'm going to be honest. When I was a kid in confirmation class, um, I remember we came over, we went over to Lakeland, and we met the bishop, and, you know, the, it was just a thing that you were expected to do. And honestly, my confirmation was not a time where I truly in my heart felt like it, I was making a decision to follow Jesus. I kind of went through the motions of doing it because everybody else was, 
I think sometimes when people join our church, they do the same thing. Okay, I've been coming for six or seven or 12 times, so I guess I ought to join the church. But it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't really change anything. And so uh, I just wanted to think about that a little bit more deeply today as we unravel this passage. If our identity is in our baptism, and our baptism is becoming part of, of a church, the Bride of Christ, this is the way God planned for us to grow in our faith. God wanted to surround us with people who would love us and support us and hold us accountable. And when I was a kid in church, I had so many people in the congregation that loved me and supported me and held me accountable. And it was such a precious gift to have that. They helped me understand my identity as a child of God. Now, I didn't have the easiest time in school, and so sometimes when I was in school, my identity was not as a child of God. It was like that nerdy band kid or that, you know, that girl that wears the homemade clothes that her mom sewed. Um, and I didn't always feel like the people in my school got me. I didn't always feel like the identity that I had with my classmates was my true identity. But in church, I always felt like people got me and they understood my true identity as a child of God. If I did anything bad and I messed up, there was always all kinds of grace for me. That people knew that even if I did something that was wrong, that I wasn't a bad person. And so that, that love, that unconditional love that was poured out on me as a child was a key part of my identity. And if I didn't have that in church, I wonder what it would have been like to think that my identity was what other people were telling me that it was. The next thing that it says in this passage is to, to pursue our spiritual disciplines. In 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 10, it says, Have nothing to do with profane and foolish tales. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, Godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and suffer reproach, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those who believe. So when you are confirmed, or when uh, those of us that have joined the church here, when we take vows at this time, one of the things that we promise is to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And that's not an a la carte buffet <laughs> that I'm going to support the church with my prayers. Good for me. It's all of those things. And what happens when we do this, it has a personal benefit to our lives. We grow in holiness when we engage in all of these things. And so as we, as we have this uh, this personal benefit, it also benefits this co-op, this church that we are a part of. The way that we live determines how vital our church will be. I worked at a, a real estate office when, um, when I was just graduating from high school for a little while, before our uh, fun network on the road days. And um, when I worked in this office, we had a coffee club. And uh, there were only a couple of people in the office who drank coffee. And uh, if you were part of the coffee club, you had to chip in 50 cents every week for coffee. And then, uh, you know, somebody would make coffee, and there was always coffee in the real estate office. And so one day, uh, one of my colleagues came in, and there was no coffee. And there was no coffee made. There was not even any coffee to make coffee. And so she was just outraged about this. She came in and she said, I paid 50 cents to be in this coffee club. And there's not only no coffee made, but there's also not even any coffee for us to make. And I, I think I was like 17 or 18, and I was like, well, you, you can go buy some. <laughs> you know? And um, she was just, just outraged that she was part of this club and that the coffee wasn't provided. But our coffee club was a co-op. And so the way that it worked is that, yeah, we all chipped in to buy the coffee, but there wasn't one designated person to make sure that there was always coffee there. If you were there and you wanted coffee and there wasn't, there wasn't any coffee to make, then somebody's going to the store. And so church works like that as well. 
Sometimes we have people that come in and they're so indignant because I want this provided for me. I remember when I was one of those indignant people. I was worshiping at First Oviedo, and I was outraged that the season of Lent was coming up and our church was not offering a Lenten study. So I marched my little self right into the associate pastor's office and I said, Pastor Brenda, how come we're not doing a Lenten Bible study? It's an important season in the church and we should have a small group during Lent. And you know what Brenda said. <laughs> Brenda said, here are some possible studies. Which one would you like to lead? <laughs> Brenda understood that the church was a co-op, that each one of us has a part with it. What would happen if we stopped attending worship, if we stopped praying, if we stopped reading scripture, we stopped contributing money, we stopped sharing our story with anyone, we stopped serving others, and we don't show up for each other. The co-op would fail and the church would die. It's not up to me by myself for the church to, to thrive. It's up to every single person. Remember that song we sang a little while ago? We are the church. It's up to every single person to contribute to this co-op. Churches everywhere close their doors when the people of the church become inactive. Now, people can lay all kinds of blame. Oh, it's society. Oh, we're too busy. They have soccer on Sunday now. But we all have the same amount of time. We're all given the same amount of hours in every day. And we all decide how we want to spend those hours. It's the people who make the church vital. People living vibrant lives of following God and committing to these vows of prayer, prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. That's what makes a church vital. It makes a vital community of faith when all of us are living into all of those things. The next thing it says in our passage of scripture is to be a role model in your actions. 1 Timothy 4, verses 11 and 12 says, Command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Like I said before, young people are not the future of the church. They're now. They're the part of the church now. No age group in our church is more important than any other age group. Every age group can live into these vital commitments. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I had my grandchildren for a few days this week, and uh, there are things that they can do even at their age to, uh, to help clean up the house, to help do yard work. And we had a rule that anytime, any, anytime the two kids fought with each other, they had to go pull weeds. <laughs> so my yard looks great right now, by the way. <laughs> but they're old enough to do that. And so we look at what's age appropriate. What are, what are first graders able to do in the life of the church? What are young people able to do in the life of the church? What are seniors able to do in the life of the church? And every age group has a way to live out their, their church membership. Now, I remember when, one thing that I do remember when I was confirmed, even though it wasn't like my big heart-warmed moment, um, I did feel very important to become a member of the church when I was confirmed. And one thing they did in our church was that when you joined the church, you got offering envelopes. Now, some people now kind of see that as crass, like, uh, congratulations, <laughs> welcome to the church, we just want your money. But I didn't see it like that when I was a kid. I was like, I get my own offering envelopes, and it's got my name on it. And so um, at the time, um, at, at some point in high school, I started doing some work for my dad, and uh, my dad owned this little miniature putting course. And I remembered I got 3.15 an hour, and I usually worked about 10 hours a week. And so I would take my little offering envelope, and I would put my $3 in it, and I would, uh, I would bring it to church. And I was so excited to be part of the contributing congregation at uh, First United Methodist Church of Cocoa Beach. 
I loved that I could do that. And one of the things that we do here at Tuscaloosa, we don't give offering envelopes, but we do give giving statements. So when young people give uh, and they put their name on it, they put it in an offering envelope and they put their name on it, they'll receive a giving statement. And I shared a couple of years ago that we have children in the church that give more than some of the members of the church. And so um, it doesn't matter uh, the amount. That $3 was not going to pay the electric bill. It was certainly not going to you know, do a whole lot for the church. But I was contributing to the church. And it shaped me to be a more generous person. And it helped me to know what it feels like to truly be part of the church. It also says to use your God-given gifts. In uh, 1 Timothy 4, 13 and 14, it says... Uh, until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy, with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. So I also had an opportunity as a kid to serve the church. I sang in the choir when I was a teenager, and how great is it to see young people playing in the praise band today? Uh, let's give them another little round of applause. And just like Henry did today, um, I, was, I was asked when I was a, a teenager to read scripture in worship. And while I was 47 when I experienced the call to ministry, um, I remembered back to a time when I was in the seventh grade, and I was asked to read scripture in worship as a seventh grader. And as I was reading scripture, I felt the presence of God around me like I'd never felt before. And as I was saying those words, it almost wasn't even my whiny little seventh grade voice. It was a voice that, that came from deep within me. I later believed that even though I didn't have the language for it or the understanding of it, that time that I read scripture as a seventh grader was the first time I felt called to ordain ministry. Something happened that day that I couldn't explain and my heart was transformed. And so after worship, when, you know, all the nice people who supported me at church were saying, oh, you did such a good job of reading scripture today, I was like, yeah, I know, right? It was good. <laughs> because something happened in me. It wasn't just me. It was, it was God speaking those words through me. And I, I just felt it powerfully. And I want to make sure that we give our children and our youth the opportunity to experience that to experience participating in worship, to read scripture, to be part of, of everything that God is calling us to do. The passage says to persevere in our callings. 1 Timothy 4, 15, 16 says, Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and your teaching. Continue in these things. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So um, our youth, sometimes it's hard to persevere. Uh, a lot of times our young people, they're at the mercy of their parents if they don't drive. So if their parents don't bring them to church or to other activities, then they can't really go. Um, so sometimes they have a lot more challenges in persevering than, than what we have as adults. Next week, we're going to talk about creating a rule of life, all of us. But I really am excited about our young people doing this because this can be something that while you may change it a little bit from year to year, it helps you understand how important it is to have different disciplines in your life. So when we do this rule of life, each one of us will make a plan of how we will practice our own spiritual disciplines of prayer, of reading scripture, of participating in worship, giving, of serving others, and sharing our stories. Next week, everyone will receive a journal. Remember when you got the, um, the gratitude journal? Okay, this one's going to be very similar. And everybody will get a journal that will be your discipleship journal. And over the next several weeks, we'll be talking about how we live into each one of these areas. How do you want to live into your life of prayer? How do you want to live into your life of scripture? And each one of you will decide what those steps look like for you. Uh, and you'll also decide how you'll be held accountable um, and how you will uh, 
first of all, create a rule of life that nurtures you and creates a benefit for yourself and your own spiritual growth, but also what you'll offer to the church. What will your practice of all of these things offer to our co-op here as a church? So as we think about all of this today and we think about what it means uh, for us to live into the identity that, that we were given in our baptism, I want every one of you, not only the youth, but every single person here to know that God has given us each a beautiful gift. God has given us an inheritance of being God's beautiful child. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, but instead live into it and be an example to this church family. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that all of our students who will be confirmed this year and all of our students who have already been confirmed and all of the people who have joined our congregation will love this church and nurture it through all of these things that we vowed in our membership vows. God, we pray that you will make us so strong and so loving that we will truly be a light to this community. We pray that you will guide us in, in our next steps and help us to be faithful and help us to stick with it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, um, I forgot who's reading our... Um, do we have somebody who's doing our... Or is that me? <laughs> okay, maybe it's me. Um, <laughs> well, let's all stand together and recite our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> and now as we, as we come to the communion table, we gather together as a church family, uh, not only the people that belong to Tuscaloosa United Methodist Church, but, but everyone who loves the Lord is welcome at this table. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on every single person that's gathered here today, and also on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ as we become transformed people to transform the world. Amen. As we come together today, we, uh, we ponder what it means to be the body of Christ and to participate in this holy meal. We bring our gifts, we bring our identity, we bring all that we have and all that we are to the service of Jesus Christ. And as we partake, this bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. If our uh, communion servers will please come forward. Charles, the body of Christ given for you. 
the blood of Christ shed for you. Pastor Bonnie, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Sadie, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Philip, the body of Christ for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Pastor Heather, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ has been shed for you. Amen. I want to let you know that we have um, gluten-free elements here if you would like them. We engage in the practice of intinction, and if you would prefer not to do that, we do have some cups that are here um, for you. And so uh, now all are welcome. The table is prepared, and all are welcome to it.
was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Butler singing. Isn't it beautiful? Wonderful. <laughs> uh, a couple of announcements before. Um, first of all, Richard. We want to welcome Richard Lane back. He's been out with back surgery. And it is uh, Richard's our head usher, and he's been out for the last few weeks recovering. And so give him a big slap on the back. No, don't, don't do that. Um, <laughs> so we're really, really happy uh, to see Richard and Cheryl back this week. Also, we're having a congregational meeting today. Um, it'll be pretty short, I think. We just want to update you on where we are with our finances and with the building sale. And so uh, if you can just uh, maybe just stay <laughs> stay in here. We'll just kind of sit down and have the meeting. And then um, if you're not staying for the meeting, then uh, we'll wish you well and be on your way. Um, but we want to just kind of have a quick meeting and let everybody know what's happening. So. Hear these words now of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And if you see any of the young people that participated today, uh, make sure you give them a shout out. Because he lives. 